Friends, Chaim Mailspin here, the Galilean, Sea of Galilee behind me. Um, uh, I, I'm with the Aliyah Return Center charity where Christians and Jews unite. The Galilee is miraculous. This is where God did, you know, 29 out of 34 miracles, right? And all of his team was chosen right here. Again, I call myself a Galilean because I believe that I'm related to, not only physically by bloodline, but to the work that God is doing. And the Aliyah Return Center, that's a registered charity, helped to found and run um, along with my wife. And we have about 12 Galileans that work with us. The Aliyah Return Center was founded to help the sons and daughters of Abraham in making their Aliyah, their return to the promised land, while at the same time educating nations from across the globe to the biblical significance of supporting Aliyah and being trained as ambassadors for Israel, practically applying the prophetic scriptures. Throughout the years as a charity, we've been able to help thousands of immigrants return and be integrated into this land by providing them complimentary lodging and a whole lot more to to find out more and to participate, go to aliareturncenter.com today. And uh, I just want to talk to you briefly, guys, is that as thick darkness covers the earth, Isaiah 60, his light is seen, his delight is upon us, right? And the light shines. I want to talk to you about the light shining. Isaiah chapter 9 says that the light shines here in the Galilee of the nations, God calls it that. And the master is still at work here. His miracles are still happening. Right? Read Matthew 24. We know that we are in intense, intense times, and we know that there, there are times of shaking, nation rising against nation, wars and rumors of wars. All these things have to happen. That's okay. But God is highlighting the Galilee and the Galilee of the nations right here it, during these fall feasts. You know, uh, look at what happens as people gather from all over the world to Jerusalem, right? A glo and, and the nations observe and the nations participate as, as a, a fervor of that seventh day is approaching, that 7,000th year, that millennial reign, right? So here looking over the, the, the Valley of Dry Bones, the Jordan Valley, I want to begin and, and tell you, you know, here's where it began for Yeshua, right here to, to minister here, to choose his team of Galileans here. Here's where it began for me and us to minister with the Aliyah Return Center. Here's where I believe in the culmination of history, right? I believe right at the dawn of the restoration of all things, you know, that it speaks of in Acts 3, verse 21. So I believe that this, this as Israel was rebirthed here, this Lazarus nation happened right here in, in the first factories, the first... Um, you know, army training, the first kibbutz, that's where our, our discipleship school is. I believe that this is the, the, the beginning of the chess game, which will culminate, it'll be from the galley, and it will culminate in, in Jerusalem. The holy month of Elul, the Hebrew month of Elul begins, right? And you have people gathering to Jerusalem to begin the fall feasts. This time to draw near to the Lord. That is what's needed most during this time. As the shofars blast throughout the land, and as right as we ourselves Galileans gather and blast a hundred shofars to prepare the way of the Lord, and not only remember what He did on Mount Sinai when He called us all to be a kingdom of priests, but to look forward what's planned in Revelation as the dead rise, right? As as the dry bones come alive. We call out to dry bones to come alive and this wind goes through, right? That's what a shofar is, it's a dry bone and the wind goes through. But don't we know that this is the place, the Jordan Valley, this is the place that I believe Ezekiel was talking about in Ezekiel 37, that this place where God would soon blow a wind and the, the bones would rattle and Sure, we're seeing it happen right now. There's a blowing. There is a blasting. And, uh, and that's what we're here for. Us Galileans are here for the culmination. We're here to rally with the nations. When I read Isaiah chapter 9, I see that he says, this is the Galilee of the nations. And the nations have such a role, including all the nations of the, of the earth, and especially where you are, because you're part of the remnant that God is rallying to rally in the valley. Aren't the fall feasts so exciting? as we are able to have, you know, not only the blasting of shofars, but then the 24 or 25 hours of straight prayer online uh, together though, in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and then to be able to practice that seventh day tabernacling for a thousand years. We practice it by building those tabernacles all over. And, and I think that it's really all these fall feasts, which are future, right? Which are preparing us for the future. I think of them as a reminder of we have a choice. Nations have a choice of how they're going to relate to Israel, right? They could be like the Persian ruler Haman, who wished to obliterate and, and 
demolish uh, and, and completely annihilate the Jewish people. Or they can be like Cyrus, who's King Cyrus says, I want to help the prayer movement in Jerusalem. I want to help with the, the aliyah of the Jewish people, right? And so when I look at this, this timeline we're in, and that, that dream, right, that Daniel interpreted of, of a st- the dream of the king of Persia. And you have this, uh, you have beautiful um, s- picture of a head of gold. And you got bronze and you got iron and iron mixed with clay. And then you have this stone coming from heaven, right? And it brings in, it ushers in a kingdom that will not be destroyed. Well, we are around for this, friends. We are those who are training for that next dimension. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all the rulers of the earth will worship and obey him. This is so true. And we are preparing. We're kings and priests in training. We're disciples on a journey, a journey to that heavenly city, that heavenly kingdom. But we have some work to do beforehand. So I want to show you quickly some of the work going on here in the Galilee of the nations. All right. I want to show you some of the work of the Aliyah Return Center for a minute. The work that this charity does. I've really enjoyed reading the book of Ezekiel, Jeremiah, uh, and I'm just jumping into Daniel now. And I've noticed throughout these prophecies, there's this call of the Jewish people home to the promised land. And that promise is still true today, even from the land of the north. We've talked about that before. And the land of the south, Ethiopia. But land of the north, you know, that's Ukraine is straight north of us. And didn't we have some come... Well, we had a beautiful event for the children of the Ukrainian refugees mm. that made Aliyah just recently because of the war. Mm. So we held a beautiful, blessed event for them, welcoming them to Israel and also helping them prepare for back to school. So their first year studying in Israel, going to meet these new kids and new lessons, starting yeah. learning Hebrew. Uh, that's quite a big step for them. They don't even know that yet. But Chaim has been through this and I've, <laughs> we went through that. Yeah. It's a big it's a big step for them so we held this beautiful event to give them backpacks equipped with uh, markers and notebooks and everything they need for school mm. uh, some of it was donated by children here in the land so that's wow. really beautiful they wrote them letters welcoming mm. them and, and blessings and um, so we were able to bless 20 families uh, here in Tiberias with this beautiful gift of love and some of these families of course after they're done staying with us in one of our different locations and getting the food, clothing, shelter, we're able to help them move on to more permanent housing. And I've I found that uh, it's very hot and it's very hard to lift furniture, but some of that furniture is donated in the shipping container and then we're able to move them into permanent housing. They're, and they're Galileans just like us now. And that's just been amazing this month to be able to help these various families also to have some of those families in our facilities they mm-hmm. stayed with us their first two weeks in israel completely for free giving them the time to look for an mm. apartment look for a job you know open their bank account stuff like that yeah. so we had a few families like this staying with us during august we have the alia forest now because we used to plant trees right in all over different places around israel different um properties with our different bloom forests. project that people yes. that wonderful donors donated towards to plant trees in israel yeah. so now what did it's we in do with all one this nice? it's now in one place i mean for the future we plan to just really continue to plant these trees by the hundreds uh over and we're calling it the alia forest and then of course the city was like hey we the the, the you know the area needs another park these kids need something to do and they need to to uh and they said a skate park would be good can we do it together so we literally in complete unity with the city of Tiberias and the mayor and the municipality were able to and with other organizations too were able to all come together and not only have an Alia forest in honor of the heroes from around the world who have helped heroes like yourself to support the immigrants as they fulfill the prophecies of the Bible and the dream of the Lord Jacob's dream but also to be able to see these kids skate and enjoy in the same place tons of fun tons of fun lastly delivering furniture to these families let me tell you what they instead of sleeping on the floor or on like a mattress to be able to have a bed to sleep on a nice bed and when the shipping containers come from around the world I'm just amazed to see the kind of good stuff these aren't these aren't nasty furniture this is some really quality you know uh, couches and beds and tables and yes. and things so just thank you for the 
for the work that you do to help not only the lone soldiers, not only Holocaust survivors, not only uh, those who are poverty stricken in the Galilee, but to really even get them furniture and clothes in our distribution center. Thank you for just sewing into the work of the LA Return Center. We're so honored to work together. God bless. I do believe the word Aliyah needs to be more known throughout the body of Messiah worldwide, globally, uh, because it's so critical for the status of sheep nation versus goat nation. Those who hear the gathering sound of the, of the Good Shepherd, right? And he's gathering the Jewish people home, all right? It's been happening and it continues to happen. And he's been gathering them home. And so we are called upon to be making the way, preparing the way of the Lord. And part of that is gathering the sheep to the sheepfold, right? Like Cyrus did. This alia, this uh, prophesied decree is prophesied 700 times in the Bible that God would gather the Jewish people home. I myself was gathered. It was a miraculous circumstance. Our family was given gold and silver publicly uh, in a satchel of gold and silver to help us with our journey home. And we've been living here for almost a quarter of a century now uh, and helping others in their transition in God's heart, it's called the return and restoration. It's called preparing the way of the Lord. Now, for a moment, look All at right, the times Not we just live wars, in. rumors of wars, right? Uh, the war in Ukraine, wars around the world, uh, typhoons, earthquakes. Um, look at like, the gas, um, Nordstrom, one and two being exploded. And look at how, how the winter is coming for them in Europe and uh, uh, rocketing prices, uh, inflation, um, uh, uh, an axis forming with Iran, North Korea, you know, Russia, China, and so on and so forth. Again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream two. We we will bring an end to it. This is uh, what I believe is the close of the six days. We're nearing, very near the end of the six days and coming to the seventh day or the 7,000th year, which is the millennial reign, right? And there is, it's imperative at this time that we understand Israel and that we relate to Israel. And here we are in Israel and I showed you a building site with my son because there's things that we need to build here, we've been building the Ambassador Academy, uh, which is a discipleship school, right at the, sh at the shores of the Jordan River, right? And, and ha people from all over the world come to this discipleship center, and they're trained as ambassadors for God's purposes that relate to Israel. People come and stay with us. They pray with us in the vertical Galilee House of Prayer. They learn in the Ambassador Academy, and they serve alongside us. Shalom friends, Chaim the Galilean here, Sea of Galilee behind me, and I'm excited to introduce you to your prophetic destiny as it relates to Israel, and that's the faithful Galileans. We Galileans of modern day invite you to come and join, cross the threshold with us, break your alabaster box, before the Lord God of Israel. And I believe your life is gonna be changed. We wanna invite you to stay, pray, learn, and serve with the faithful Galileans of today. All right, come as young leaders. Come as those who are young at heart. Send your friends here. Book in one of our places with our bookings agent uh, in Kibbutz Living, in more country area, more city view, uh, some of our locations like up on the hill. We wanna invite you to then pray with us. Join Vertical Galley House of Prayer. Come on, see how the living stones are singing forth the songs that shape a generation. And will you 
take your shift in the prayer house, that's vertical Galilee house of prayer, will you put one hour, two hour, three hours of your time committed to preparing a place for the Lord in his land that he loves so much, where he did 29 out of 34 miracles right here and trained his faithful Galileans. We want to invite you to not only stay, not only pray, but learn. Join the Ambassador Academy. We've got this school, this discipleship school that goes throughout on excursions throughout this land. And it's not like a tour. You get to go and read the Word of God on the Mount of Beatitudes. You get to go to a boat on the, on the Sea of Galilee. Go to the different places where God did so much, but at the same time, receive your download for your ministry that God has for you in your home country, home community, home fellowship. All right, we want to invite you to not only stay, pray, learn, but serve. That's right, there's so many avenues where you can get your hands dirty in the soil of the Galilee and help the poor and needy. Whether it's those who've made Aliyah, who are new immigrants and they're seeing the land for their first few moments. Whether it's helping the poor and destitute in the soup kitchen. What about if you go over to fold clothes and give them away in the Livracha? What if you're helping uh, cook Shabbat dinner for the lone soldiers? You can play your part in being a blessing. You engage with the Father's heart and are equipped for your role in this time. Don't hesitate, don't spectate, participate in the fulfillment of His Word. God bless you from the Galilee, from the faithful Galileans' home base. Those who Psalms 27, uh, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that one thing I will seek, that tabernacle of David. A friend of mine had a, um, and I'm on a rant here, so uh, a friend of mine had a vision uh, where he, where an angel, very tall, tall angel with light coming out of his eyes, um, it held his, the shoulder of my friend and he said, look, around the world, you see these pockets of light, he, it was elevated to, to a very high place and he saw around the world pockets of light connecting with heaven, so these beams of light. And he zoomed in throughout the world and he could see that there was a place of worship intercession. And they were calling for the outcast to return, but there was a place of, of, uh, of a Goshen. In, in essence, the angel said that they are enabling Goshens, protected places to exist around the world. How important is it that there be a place like that here in the Galilee where Jesus taught his disciples to pray? But we keep seeing God's affirmation on the work of the Aliyah Return Center. Two million plus dollars worth of gold given and silver. Doesn't it say that in Isaiah 60? The gold will come as, the, as your sons are carried in the arms, your daughters on the shoulders, right? Isaiah 49 verse 22 says the nations must help with that. The nation's got to be those carrying. We don't carry ourselves home. And that's why the promise of the promised land is so true and it's so for right now. Uh, there's never been a time like this where I see the four winds blowing out of Europe, down from Africa, in Asia, in the Americas, uh, up, in, up North America, Canada, in the in, uh, United States, down in South America. The wind is blowing. But people got to get out of... You know, oh, I just got to buy dog food, I got to buy diapers, I got to pay my rent, I got to take care of my company. And yes, these things are important. But if we lose sight of the ushering in, the preparing the way of the kingdom that will not be destroyed, we're focusing on temporal things that will be destroyed. You know, please, for a moment, watch this video of how God is restoring and continues to restore the land of Israel. The 9th of November is when Kristallnacht happened in Germany, where synagogues were burned. And, and many of those were Christians who were doing the burning of synagogues. And I want to challenge us right now um, to keep our lights on in our churches around the world in solidarity with what God is doing in Israel. Friends, watch this video. Friends, Chaim Mailspin here, the Galilean. Sea of Galilee behind me. Um, uh, I, I'm with the Aliyah Return Center charity where Christians and Jews unite. But let me tell you what, uh, there's something heavy on my heart. November 9th, 1938. This is a day that will live in infamy. On this day, Nazi mobs torched hundreds of synagogues and vandalized thousands of Jewish homes, businesses, and cemeteries. Nearly 100 Jews were murdered that night. And this was the beginning, of course, of the murder of six million Jews during the Holocaust. How can one commemorate one of the worst atrocities known to mankind? Well, on Wednesday night, November 9th, 2022, it'll mark this abhorrent night when the lights of Germany's synagogues went dark in 1938. 
It's called Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass. In memory of this night and countless victims, you know, throughout um, all of Germany, but throughout Europe, we need to recognize as churches, as synagogues throughout the world, we need to have the lights blaze all night long. Light must replace darkness. The resurgence of light will replace the loss and the friendship will replace destruction. Goodwill will triumph over evil. The Jewish people will never, ever be destroyed. Please do not miss this chance to weigh in, to be part of the restoration. Make sure that your church, your home group, your institution will join among with Christians who stand with their Jewish brethren. Leave the lights on all night on Wednesday night, November 9th, 2022. Register to be part of this. Join in with people who care. There are those who are bastions of the restoration. Those who, who take the Bible seriously. And I invite you to take the Bible seriously right from here in Israel, north of Israel, Sea of Galilee. I want to invite you. Let's link arms together and stand for righteousness in this time. Lord, is it time now to restore the kingdom of Israel? Answer, I believe, is yes. Acts chapter 3 verse 21 tells us he must remain in heaven. Heaven must receive him until the restoration of all things as spoken of by the holy prophets, right? That is Aliyah. They agree. There's no dispute. It's Aliyah. It's, it's, and, and furthermore, Aliyah you know, is something Jewish people do as they come home, but it's something the nations do as they participate in God's covenant promises. They are an, an Olah which is the same word as Aliyah, but it's not them moving here, it's them being a living sacrifice poured out on the altar. And this fragrance, the Lord loves it, okay? And it's this preparation of our garments to wear for this next dimension as we are kings and priests in training. What are the white garments? Well, it says it's the righteous acts of the saints in Revelation. Action is very important as well. Friends, let me summarize with this. As we're getting our lamps filled with oil and being those wise you know, and not the foolish ones. As we are remembering the tradition of the Galilean wedding, where no one knows the day, no one knows the hour, you know, that's what happened historically here when someone was going to get married. The father is the only one who would know. He's like, son, hold on. It might be the middle of the night, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. All right, as we're, as we're reaching the fullness of the Gentiles, which leads to the fullness of Israel, we have to be able to recognize there are three prerequisites of the return of Yeshua. There is the, this, this Galilean hope, this tikva, this gospel must be sent throughout the whole earth, okay? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. A lot of people know about that. A lot of people are on that. The second one, not as many are on it, preparing the bride, the white garments, the oil and the lamps. This is so important. Day and night worship, tabernacle of David, um, proving ourselves worthy to rule in the age to come. Okay, but number three, and not least, is Yeshua dries his tears. He's weeping over Jerusalem and he says, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we know that that happens when Romans 11, verse 11, the nations provoke Israel to be jealous through righteous actions like helping with Aliyah, like helping with the return to the promised land, out of war-torn Ukraine, out of war-torn lands, out of persecution in France, out of uh, places where anti-Semitism is rampant, out of even Ethiopia, lost tribes, out of a Lamba tribe in, in Zimbabwe, over in Kaifeng, uh, up in Manipur, North India, lost tribes, bringing them home. And it says the world will know that I'm the Lord when I gather them. There is supernatural there is supernatural hatred right now for the Jewish people, rising and rising and rising. The numbers are astronomical. But at the same time, there is supernatural love. That's what we're part of together, the supernatural love, building together, building. And that's what I want to ask is for God's blessing upon you as you have a Ben-Gurion mantle as a builder. And you know how throughout history there's always been this continuum? You know, Hiram of Lebanon built the palace and the temple with David, with uh, Solomon, sorry, with Solomon. They built together. You have Ruth and Boaz together. You have, you know, Obed-Edom. Uh, he took care of the, ta of the, of the uh, Ark of the Covenant along with David. You have throughout history, Trump and Netanyahu. You have these pictures of working together. That's what we have to do. Together, unite. Not be uniform, but unified. That is an important word.
This is the word, a time of supernatural enabling for God's purposes because the time is short. And I want to encourage you to come and see what's going on here at aliyahreturncenter.com. Check out uh, the work to help those who made Aliyah who serve in the army. They don't have any family here. They're called lone soldiers. The work to give food in the soup kitchen, uh, food vouchers, food, clothing, shelter, housing the immigrants as they are in their, as they are in their transition time to Israel and need a helping hand. I just think of these words in so much as you've done unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So thank you for coming to join on our next Ambassador Academy. It's uh, January, in January 2023. We've got a big group. We'll be going throughout the land. And come break your alabaster box in vertical Galilee House of Prayer at the Jordan River near the Sea of Galilee. And let's believe for miracles. Don't you know that it says in Micah, the prophet says, the miracles you saw in Egypt will happen again as God gathers the Jewish people. Do you believe the words of Micah, chapter 7? I believe them. And God has great plans for you to heal you and keep you in great uh, mobility and enabled to do His will. And for us too, and I believe there's a time of coming together. May God bless you from the Galilee of the Nations as you enjoy the fall feasts, as we step into this season together. Let's rejoice. Not only that our names are written in the book of life, and not only that, that we're going to win the spiritual war, but also rejoice that we got a plan and a purpose that nothing can stop because he holds the key of David. God bless you from the Galilee, from the Sea of Galilee. I'm Chaim Mailspin. We are a charity based in the Galilee with operations throughout the land of Israel. We act as a central distribution hub of goods for immigrants and the needy in Galilee. But as we supply other organizations, we're making an impact throughout Israel, providing aid in the form of goods. We also deliver directly where needed to the new immigrant families' homes. As a charity, we have a few different projects going on, including but not limited to a lone soldier houses, like this is multi-residence for these young people who come make Ali and have no family to cook for them, clean for them, and really love them while they're defending the defenseless on the front lines. And it's called the Upper Room. We have, of course, Livorha, meaning to the blessing. It's a free clothing distribution center. It looks like a storefront right in downtown Tiberias. And as part of our ongoing work to help those who made Aliyah from the Holocaust years and years ago, we see that they're still in need. And as they are in need of food parcels, we're able to give them more as we expand even to other cities like Nazareth and Afula. And of course, these golden galas where they get rings and the gold continues to be given by wonderful people from all over the world. And we continue to be able to host these banquets, these golden galas. What a blessing it is. We have various housing for Aliyah. We're honored to provide new immigrants complimentary, short-term, free initial housing uh, in the various gorgeous locations throughout the Sea of Galilee region. And of course, give them the supermarket gift cards to help them with all their immediate basic food and personal needs. We provide an Olpan, that's a Hebrew school, in full partnership with the Ministry of Aliyah, absorption of the government of Israel, and here at the shores of the Sea of Galilee, also have our new offices that we've opened thanks to the support of friends of Israel from throughout the world. There's also the job training classes for the new Olim immigrants, where they not only receive these nighttime training classes, but they're aided in job integration process. Every participant gets placed in a guaranteed job to honorably feed their family. Our main goals are to see the attachment, integration, really the establishment of the Jewish people here to the Promised Land.